Fox this morning, Elon Musk dominating the headlines once again this morning. The Washington Post reporting that Musk told prospective investors in his deal to buy Twitter he plans to get rid of nearly 75 percent of the company's 7,500 workers. Reuters reporting that Twitter is now telling its staff it has no plans for company-wide layoffs, despite a memo uh, that uh, had been at least indicated in this Washington Post article. Meantime, Bloomberg reporting that the Biden administration is considering whether some of Musk's ventures should be subjected to national security reviews. This includes the deal for Twitter and SpaceX's Starlink satellite network. Joining us right now, former SEC chair Jay Clayton is also a CNBC contributor. He is also the lead independent director at Apollo. Jay, it's great to see you this morning. Uh, we talked about this prospect to some degree as early as the moment he tried to buy Twitter, which was, you know, if you own Twitter, are there national security issues, not just for Twitter, frankly, but for SpaceX, which has obviously government contracts, and Tesla? Yeah, look, good morning, Andrew. And uh, from the very beginning, we talked about many of the complications uh, that exist in a multinational transaction, uh, including a multinational transaction that involves technology and, and, and personal data. And over time, and you know, I've, I've been on this program several times talking about how we've, we've ticked those off, whether it was due diligence, financing, shareholder approval, and, and regulatory approval was largely assumed to have been something that had been de-risked from this transaction. Uh, I will say that the, the reports that we saw overnight uh, were not something that I anticipated. Look, it is, it is clear that Mr. Musk is and, and has been for a long time involved in a number of enterprises that raise national security and other important concerns for the U.S. government. Um, the fact that this came up at this time, you know, I think we're going to learn a little bit over time whether how real this is for the transaction. Uh, that's part of our system. We can go into that. Um, but what I will note for, for, for viewers is that over the last five years, um, CFIUS, the review process that has been mentioned in these reports, the, the Committee on Foreign Investment in the United States, its jurisdiction has been expanded in several ways. One is around technology and critical infrastructure and personal data. And then the other is on the amount of foreign investment and the amount of influence that is necessary to trigger a CFIUS review. That amount has come down um, for those critical areas. And what is that amount? And how it, do you, how, by the way, how do you think about owning Twitter in terms of this, this, it's a free speech issue and the like, but also it's not just the ownership of Twitter unto itself. I think it's also some of the commentary that he's made and decisions he's made around Starlink and has demonstrated just how, how much influence he really does have singularly. Well, let, let's separate those. When, I, when we talk about CFIUS, we're talking about the, the foreign investment in the United States. And those thresholds coming down go to things rather than control over the entity to things like board seats, access to data, ability to influence decision making in, in one of these critical companies. Does a, does a foreign um, entity have that ability to essentially use their ownership position, even if it's not a controlled position, to extract um, information that, quest that I would say calls into question right. national security issues or the like. Now, the, your point on one person controlling or having such influence over issues around national security and the like, look, it's something that in a democracy we should be talking about, but it's not something new. Much of our much of our national defense and critical infrastructure is outsourced to private enterprise. Private enterprise, you know, is better at building things right. than the a hundred percent. My question to you is actually when you were talking about ownership issues. Part of the other thing that uh, critics or, or skeptics might say is they say, look, he has a massive business uh, for Tesla. This is in China. The, the government of China may not own uh, that business, but has a massive influence on him. Uh, and therefore, how should we think about that from a national security perspective as it relates to these other businesses? Andrew, I think you have raised an extremely important issue here. Um, and it's not an issue that just is around the businesses that we've cited uh, where Mr. Musk has a controlling influence. It's, it's about all multinational businesses doing business and having a substantial interest in China, as we have seen China pivot. It is fairly clear to me and to, to those who watch that you know, the Chinese government is very control-oriented and is willing to use all the tools at its disposal 
to exercise that control, including economic influence, and that would include economic influence over U.S. companies doing business in China.